What started off as a normal day for our first patient has ended up with a trip to accident and emergency. Luckily, they've come to the right place. In the waiting room is six-year-old Harry, who's come in with an unusual head complaint. I have a big stone in my head. It hurt. I'm not surprised. How did that happen? It was just another ordinary day in the playground. You know how it is. It was break time and Harry was chasing wolves. Wolves? In the playground? Oh, I suppose they probably do have wolves at Hogwarts. It's not Harry Potter, Chris. OK, he was pretending to chase wolves. They were everywhere and Harry was running, ready to pounce. He was just about to catch one when suddenly he tripped and smacked his head on the ground. Ouch! It was a good game until I fell over. Enter Dr Gareth Hardy. He's the man to sort out that stone. What have you done to yourself, eh? What's going on? I fell over in the school. Dr Gareth examines Harry to check for signs of any other injury to his head. And you just got to look at my like that. Then it's time to tackle the obvious problem. Oh, you've got a big bit of gravel stuck in there, haven't you? Ow. Sorry, my friend. It's clearly sore, so he'll need some anaesthetic cream to numb the area before our doctor can get to work. Does it hurt? It's, um, not a single bit anymore. Good. With Harry's head numb, Dr Gareth gets plastic tweezers ready to grapple with some grit. It looks a bit tricky. Yes, I think it's jammed in further than we thought. I can feel the trick of gravel in there. It's not coming out. I can't quite flick it back out because it's so deep down. Maybe a sharper tool will help. Or not. Anyone got a hoover? Anyway, you might be wondering where that stone has gone to. Well, behind our forehead are five layers for it to get lost in. A combination of skin, fat, fibrous tissue and blood cells surrounds our skull. When these layers are broken, dangerous infection can occur. So it's important that we get that stone out of Harry's head and close up that hole. But no one said it was going to be easy. This is one stubborn stone. Is it the Philosopher's Stone? Just drop the Harry Potter thing, Chris. Sorry. We've got some of the gravel out, but there's a chunk left, right, deep down, so we'll give Harry a little break and we'll see what we can do. OK. We'll come back to Harry in a bit while we go and check out another patient, Ron Weasley. You're kidding. Yes, Chris. I'm kidding. It's not only emergency departments in hospitals that deal with the unexpected. There are expert teams all over the UK ready for action. We're going on call with the UK's emergency services, heading into the thick of the action to help save lives. Today, it's Zahn's turn on the front line. This rapid response vehicle belongs to the West Midlands Ambulance Service. It's one of over 800 vehicles serving 5 million people. And today, you're coming on call with me to see what it's like to be one of the first at the scene of an emergency. This fast medical service is on standby, ready to help you 24 hours a day. If you have an accident, they're the people you want to come to your rescue. On call with me today is paramedic Jan Van. So because there's so much going on, it's going to be so busy. We've got James filming and I've got this camera as well, so hopefully I can get in close. The service takes thousands of 999 calls. Jan alone can get up to 20 emergency call-outs in a day. And we've just had another new case come in. We have an 83-year-old lady who's fallen. She has injured her face. That's all we know at the moment. Usually. Doctors like me see patients in a hospital where they've already had some treatment. We have the full story of what's happened to them. But you have to think quickly when you know you're going to be the first on the scene of an accident. All the while we're on the way, we're trying to think of all the initial steps we need to go through. And that's what Jan's very, very good at. We arrived just five minutes after the call came in, and I can see our patient Olive with some firemen who stopped to help. My name's Janice. I'm a paramedic. First thing that Jan's doing is just trying to get a sense of whether or not she knows where she is. Is she conscious? Is she bleeding? What's her pulse? What's her blood pressure? And all of that helps Jan start to make decisions about how best to treat her. And no pains down your back where I was no. pressing? No. What we're going to do is I'm going to sit you up so I can look at your head. Is that OK? Yeah. God, you've been in the wars. How are you feeling now? I feel all right. I've just um, I've slipped up that curve. What's very nice to see is that Olive's 
talking, she knows who she is, she knows where she is. So all of that's very, very reassuring, which is really nice. How much pain are you in with your face? Yeah, it's sore on your cheek. She's got quite a nasty bruise to the side of her face and a little cut on her nose. She's not been unconscious, so we've not concerned too much about her head injury, but we need to get some x-rays on her face and make sure she's not broken anything. You've cracked your face a whopper. I think we need to get you to the hospital for a checkup and get an x-ray on that cheek. The ambulance arrives to take Olive to hospital for further checks. If you get any pain when you're walking, let us know. And what's really reassuring to see is Olive's able to walk into the ambulance by herself, and that's a really good sign. So it's really important that the ambulance was here and the paramedics were here as quickly as we were. She's gotten to an ambulance, she'd be on the way to hospital. Which means it's time for us to get back in the car, ready for when the next call comes in. 5032, new job received, Eva. Got an another job immediately? Yeah. With hundreds of rapid response crews like this on standby, it means that if you had an emergency, expert medical care will be with you in minutes. Six-year-old Harry came into hospital with a stone stuck in his head. He'd been playing a game at school with his friends. They were in a forest chasing wolves when he tripped and fell on his head. As you do. So far, the slippery stone has escaped Dr. Gareth's grip. Enter senior doctor, Lorcan Dwar. He's going to give Harry some gas to help get that stone out. Hello. Hello. The gas will numb the pain receptors in Harry's brain so that he won't feel a thing. You put this over your head like this. There we go. Yeah. You're like a fighter pilot now. And he's got some entertainment to take his mind off it all. OK, here we go. Take two. Gas is clearly doing the trick. Or is it the game? Oh, oh, it looks like he's got it. This is one slippery stone. But with some fine tweezers and a super steady hand, Harry's big bonce boulders oh. banished at last. Hey. Well done, that man. <laughs> but are we sure there's nothing else lurking in there? Got a big chunk of gravel out. Can't find anything else, so I'm just going to make sure there's not in there by doing a quick x-ray and they'll show up any other bits of uh, stone or gravel in the wound. Nice and still. A quick headshot done, and there's some good news for Harry. Well, that's where your bump is there, and any gravel would show up very bright white. So oh, there's right, nothing there so there's nothing in there yeah. at all. Well, there is his brain, Mum. Good news, it's the all clear for Harry. Stone free, Harry's patched up and ready for action. Hang on, he's not fighting wolves again, is he? Our next patient was just having a normal day. But now they're in accident and emergency. Let's meet them. This is five-year-old Tyke, who's modelling a very fetching bandage around his head. I banged my head on the railings. I want you to follow me right now. And they really hurt it. I bet it did. So how did he end up banging his bonce on the railings in the first place? It was lunchtime at school, and Tiger was running fast, faster than Olympic gold medalist Usain Bolt. No way! <gasps> well, OK, not that fast, but go with it. He ran so fast, he passed three countries in three seconds. He ran across the world and into orbit. No way! No, I'm exaggerating. Nothing could stop him. But then he slipped and went flying into some spiky railings. Ouch! There's was blood all over here. Ooh, sounds nasty. Enter Dr. Vanessa Merrick. She'll sort Tiger out. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to give it a clean. It looks a bit deep, so it may be that we need to put a couple of stitches in. You can see that he's got quite a big cut to the right side of his head. Warning, this looks a bit gross. It goes all the way through from the surface of the skin, right through the, the fat that's underneath and the muscle as well and right through to the bone. So that's why we need to put the stitches in to hold it together. In that case, let's get that head numb. We don't want Tig feeling those stitches. First, Nurse Laura numbs the surface skin with gel. Then Dr Vanessa injects a stronger anaesthetic deeper into the tissue. This means Tig shouldn't feel a thing. It's going to have a test. Can you feel that? What? I'll take that as a no. Well, that's good then. <laughs> now his head's numb, let's get stitching. Stitches are only used when a wound is really deep. They join the sides of the cut together to help it heal. In this emergency department, they use 100 metres of stitching thread in a year, 
That would go round Tige's head 200 times. We're just going to put this over your eyes, sweetheart. Is that OK? Just... Anyway, to finish things up, Nurse Laura applies some special glue. This seals the whole wound to help it heal and stop infection. It's going together pretty well, hasn't it? Now he's stitched up, it's time for Tig to head home. Bye. Next time... Our next patient's day has taken an unexpected turn. Oh, I do like an unexpected turn. <clears throat> and they've ended up in A&E. In accident and emergency, five-year-old Ayushi has come in with a cut eyebrow. Oh, no! What happened? Picture the scene, Zond. A football stadium full of cheering fans. The crowd going nuts. Wow! Did I just spot a cashew? Zond. World-class football was being played on the pitch, and running up and down the touchline was Ayushi. Ooh, is she a linesman? No, Zahn. Ooh, is she warming up to replace Harry Kane? No, Zahn. She was chasing her friend Mohammed along the touchline when someone kicked the ball and it hit her on the head. Ouch! The question is, did she catch Mohammed? No, he was fast. Oh, well, you can't win them all. Here to have a nose at Ayushi's noggin is Dr Edward Snelson. Come on in. Have a seat. But Ayushi's having far too much fun for that. The fact that Ayushi is playing is a good sign, but the doctor needs to do further checks. So, can I have a look at the bump on your head? Can you close your eyes very tight for me? Oh. And then open them really wide. Don't go to sleep, Ayushi. Open your eyes. That's very good. Now, can you have a little look at my finger over there? And look at it up there, all the way over here, all the way there and down there. She seems completely well. I'm not concerned about her from a head injury point of view. Now, the cut is only the top part of the skin. It doesn't go all the way down. Okay. So because of that, it's almost certainly not going to need stitches. Your skin is made up of layers of skin cells fat, tissue and blood cells. The deeper the cut, the more layers get damaged. Minor cuts only affect the top layer. That's what's happened to Ayushi's eyebrow. The skin needs to come back together so that it doesn't produce a nasty scar. So Ayushi's cut is treated by Nurse Becky. But it's not her wound that Ayushi is worried about. Is it a sticker? Who doesn't want a sticker? I do. A few steri strips later, and Ayushi is all patched up. There we go. Perfect. All stuck together. What do you say now? Thank you. No problem. Have we forgotten something? The sticker. I haven't forgotten your sticker. There we go. All stickered up and raring to go, Ayushi's off. Bye! <laughs> so we'll see you next time for more... Operation on... Ouch! <laughs> Operation Ouch! Let's head back to accident and emergency. Go on. For another curious case. Go on. Well, in accident and emergency, seven-year-old Jago is in with his mum. Go on. I've cut my head. Right. How'd that happen? I have feet on my chair and I, f and I fell back. Go on. He was, I, I, I leaned back because I, it, it took a long time to fall. I tried, I tried to lean forward, but... It was heavy me, so it took till it flattened. OK, well, let's find out more. Jago and his pal Zander were waiting patiently to play a game of squash, but they soon got bored and started climbing on their seats. Ooh, I bet they were pretending to be mountain goats, Chris. Hmm, dangerous. Or clowning around in the circus. Even more dangerous. Or maybe they were on a spacewalk. A uh, no, sound. Jago's seat tipped backwards and he bashed his head on the wall. Ouch! Yeah, I started screaming. <gasps> Quite dramatic. Examining Jago's bash bonds is Dr Helen Stewart. First, Dr Stewart does some tests to make sure that Jago's brain is functioning correctly. Good reflexes, Jago. Brain's good. But what about that noggin? Oh, sorry, that's your hair. I'm just... That's my hair. After some of Jago's hair is removed, the dog can finally see the wound. That's actually... 
He's got a cut that's about a centimetre and a half in length, but the edges are quite straight and come together quite nicely. So it's it's quite deep, so I thought it might need a stitch, but actually we'll probably be able to glue the wound shut. He has a red bloody bit there. Nice hair, Jago. It's like werewolf hair. Werewolf hair? Stop it. Fixing Jago's head is Sister Anna Cowlishaw. And quick clean. And then we'll stick it back together with glue. Quick snap for the family album. Look away if you're squeamish. The edges of Jago's wound are held together, and a few spots of special skin glue are applied. Are it closed? Are you done? Let's have a look. Great job, Sister Anna. Jago can go home now, and his head will be better in about five days. And what has Jago learned? Uh, not climbing on the back of a chair. That sounds like a really good lesson, yeah. You said it, Mum. Bye. 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 In accident and emergency, the team is ready to fix their next patient. Well, let's meet them. In Liverpool accident and emergency, five-year-old Jake has come in with his mum and a nasty cut on his head. But he's no ordinary Jake. He is... Super Jake! So, how did our superhero end up in hospital? I was running and I didn't look where I was going. Were you racing to save planet Earth, Super Jake? Bingo, bingo, bingo. That's superhero code for yes. Let's see how it happened. Super Jake was outside playing with his friends. Other superheroes? No, no, Jake was the only superhero on the scene. That's cool. Anyway, he was on a mission. To save planet Earth? Uh, something like that. Awesome. So, on his mission, he was running faster and faster, and just as he was about to take flight... What happened, Zand? What happened? He ran straight into an electricity box. Head first. Ouch! And from the nasty gash on his head, I dread to think what state that electricity box is in. Electric box, I uh, just dished on it. Uh, Yikes! What happened then? Uh, oh. And then I fell over. Sounds painful. Luckily, Dr Rob Maguire is ready to give Jake a thorough examination. What's, what's your name, Jake or Superman? Uh, it's Super Jake, Doc. I like your outfit. I got one of those but a bit bigger. Awesome. I need to get one. Me too. Let me have a look. Does it hurt, then? Head injuries can be dangerous, so the doctor needs to make sure Jake hasn't done any serious damage. The doctor knows what healthy ears and eyes look like, and Jake's look... Very, very good. Great! Next, it's the follow-the-finger test, which shows Jake's brain is responding to what his eyes are seeing. And there's no damage done. Don't worry, Mum, we can fix up that graze. He's just got a minor cut here. I think that needs to be sealed up. Ready to do that is Nurse Karen. She pulls the wound together and seals it with some sticky strips. Summoning his superhero powers, our man of steel doesn't feel a thing. Well, maybe just a little bit. He's human. He's not. He's a superhero. Oh, yeah. So you need to keep this dry. So no swimming, deep sea diving. No fighting with sharks. No. Well, that's not going to be easy for a superhero. No siree. To make sure that wound really heals, the nurse puts a dollop of special medical glue on top. There we go. And with that, Super Jake is in one piece again. That deserves a high five. Yes, and it's time for our superhero to get back to work. Bye. Just look where you're going this time. <laughs> Earlier, Max had to take a trip to accident and emergency. Let's see if he's getting better. Back in Sheffield, four-year-old Max is being treated with antibiotics for cellulitis, an infection of the skin that causes redness and swelling. It all started a couple of days ago when Max was watching his favourite monster film on TV. He was running about, joining in with the fun, when he tripped and cut his cheek on the table. Max's mum treated the wound at the time and it looked like it was healing, but underneath an infection was spreading. So with a lot of swelling around his eye, we need to make sure that his eyesight isn't affected by the cellulitis infection. Over to eye specialist Dr Imran Hack to see what he can see. I need to have a look at your eye. Is that OK? Yeah. Yeah? 
the, the layers of the skin, if they become inflamed, that's basically what cellulitis is. In this case, we're worried if it's orbital cellulitis, that's when it involves the actual area where the eye is. Um, if that's involved, then it can sometimes not only damage the eye, but track back into the brain itself, and that can cause problems. So, Dr. Imran makes sure Max's eye is moving normally, and then he gets out a nifty bit of headgear. This lets him look right into the back of Max's eyeball, and it'll show if the infection has spread from Max's face into his eye. I spy with my big eye. With this, what I wanted to do was really look at the back of the eye and see if there's any pressure on the optic nerve. That's a little nerve that leaves the back of the eye to go to the brain. In his case, the infection hasn't spread that far and it's only limited to the skin itself and not involving the eye. So I think Max will be absolutely fine as long as he gets antibiotics. He'll probably be home in the next couple of days. With his eye given the all clear, now Max just has to wait for the antibiotics to tackle his skin infection and get the swelling down in his face. Day two, and it's time for an update. I'm getting better. That's good. Uh, his eye has gone down considerably, uh, but the inflammation is still inflamed underneath his eye. It's quite a difference from day one, although he's not ready to go home yet. Max has to stay in hospital for another night to get more antibiotics into his system. But the next day, there's good news. Yes, a lot better. It does look much less swollen now. Now that he's had antibiotics for two days, Max has improved dramatically. The cellulitis has been curtailed and we're happy for him to go home. And by the looks of it, Max can't wait. Maybe that monster movie's on the telly again. Bye. Bye, Bye Max. Max. Remember Scott and his badly cut leg? Well, let's find out how he's getting on. And this is not for the squeamish. Whoop. Back in Liverpool, Scott's been in overnight with an injured leg. Scott was on his mountain bike having a wheelie competition with his mates. Um, they're not wearing helmets. I know, Zahn. Suddenly, his foot slipped off the pedal. Oh, be careful. At first, he thought it was just a scratch, but when he looked at it, he cried out. Ouch! It is hurting me, but a lot better from yesterday. It might not be as sore as it was, but Scott needs an operation to get that wound fixed up. So it's in with the anaesthetic and off to sleep for Scott. Now it's surgery time. A few tweaks and... Let's give it a wash and see what we're dealing with. In the hot seat today, Surgeon Ravi Badge. First, Mr Badge needs to cut away all the dirty, contaminated tissue at the edge of the wound. He then gives the whole thing a right good clean to keep it free from infection and help it heal. Soon, it's time to start stitching. If you're squeamish, look away now. There, that's that. Great job, Doc. Very neat. Scott was fortunate that he didn't do any damage to the nerve and the blood vessel which was running on the back of his leg. He got away with the minor injury. Scott's soon up on his feet again and keen to get back to his favourite hobby, boxing. Bye, Bye Scott. Bye. Zond, no one is going to believe you're taller than Neil. Let's head back to the emergency department to see how our patient's getting on. Back in accident in emergency, 13 year old Reese came into hospital with a bashed up face after a biking accident. I damaged my forehead and my nose and my really, uh... He'd been at a party trying out some bike tricks. But a big slope, uh, a really, really big slope, caught him out, and he ended up flying over his handlebars onto his face. Although it wasn't as bad as it looked, Reese couldn't wait for the swelling in his lip to go down. I find it very hard to eat and everything because my tongue is swollen. And the doctors were also waiting so they could decide if he'd need any plastic surgery. Two weeks later, and Reese is back for his checkup, and I'm pleased to see his face looking, well, Pretty transformed. The swelling's gone down a lot, and I can't eat all my favourite food and everything. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried about you wasting away there for a while. 
Well, with the important news out of the way, let's meet Professor Simon Carley and find out if you're going to need that surgery or not. I think that's starting to heal quite nicely, actually. The bits on your forehead really almost completely healed, haven't they? His best chance is for his body to do all the work, to do the job that it's designed to do. Your skin needs to be a tough barrier so it can protect you, and it's designed to repair itself constantly. All the time, new skin cells are working their way up from the bottom layer to the top, which usually takes about a month. But because Reese's injury is severe and his skin is healing, it's going to take a bit longer. The bits down here, they're doing pretty well as well. To know what it's eventually going to completely look like, it's probably going to be about six months. Six months might sound like ages, but every skin cell contains pigment, which is what gives your skin its colour. It's going to take a while for all of Reese's cells to reach the top layer and his skin colour to return to normal. So I think you can already see, just on that patch on the, on the forehead there, if you look in the middle parts of that, can you see how some of the pigment is already starting to come through on the inside? I suspect that when you first did that, that looked completely pink. Yeah. And now you're already seeing some of the pigment cells coming through. Yeah, the doctor said that, all, that it's OK and it's healing properly. That they could see my a skin tone developing underneath. With Reese's skin healing well, he might not need that surgery after all. I know there was talk about plastic surgery and stuff like that. I think at this stage, I don't think that's going to be necessary. I'm amazed that it's healed so well, actually. Mm. Bodies, yeah. bodies are pretty remarkable things. I'm just really because I won't have to go into surgery. <laughs> you know, to be honest, you can get back on your bike pretty soon as well. It's a good result for Reese, but just go steady on that bike. That's not amazing, Sand. Let's go to Accident and Emergency and see how our patient's getting along. We're back in Manchester with six-year-old Rachel and her cut hand. Rachel was playing football with her sister in the garden and the crowd were going wild. There they are. And then she slipped and cut her hand on a lurking piece of glass. Her cut was very deep, so she needs an operation to check if the movement in her hand is effective. Dan explains how serious this could be. When you're playing on the Xbox, you'll be able to move around the same, will you? So if you have the operation, you'll be able to game again. Shall we get this operation done then, Rachel? Ready to go. Once Rachel's asleep, the operating team examine the injury and find that the glass has cut through the muscle and the nerve that gives sensation to two of her fingers. She's had a very lucky escape because the glass had narrowly missed another important nerve by just one millimetre. The doctors repair the damage, and when she heals, Rachel will be as good as new. After Rachel wakes up from the operation, she comes to a decision. I'm not going to play football for a while. I think that's a thumbs up. Yep, there's the thumb. Now the doctors give her the all clear to go home. After the surgery, Rachel made a great recovery and has full use of her hand again. Bye. Oh, mind that hand. <laughs> it's not amazing, Zan. Let's head back to the emergency department to see what the latest is with our patient. In Manchester, eight-year-old Charlie is in hospital with a hole in his head. Charlie was out riding his bike with his twin brother when they had an idea for a race. Only it was down some stairs and they weren't wearing any helmets. They set off, bumpity bumpity bump, when all of a sudden, Charlie lost his grip and went flying through the air. Oh, mind the bird whacking his head on some railings. It was like rain dropping, but in blood. The wound has been numbed with anaesthetic gel, and now it's time to fix that head. But before the stitching can begin, the team need to make Charlie comfortable. And what we're going to do is put some magic gas on, and it makes you feel a little bit woozy. The gas Charlie is breathing in is known as laughing gas. It makes you relaxed and stops you feeling any pain, meaning Dr Omar can get to work. First, the deeper tissue is sewn up with dissolvable stitches. You're doing so well, Charlie. So well, in fact, his mind's on something else entirely. I'm still starving, actually. You're still starving? <laughs> it's an interesting time to be thinking about food, but when a guy's got to eat, a guy's got to eat. You'll have to wait a bit longer yet, though, mate, because we've got to tackle the top layer now. Is it fixed? It's yeah. fixed. Yep, one forehead fixed and a patched-up patient ready to go. 
Thank you. Nice one, Charlie. Thank you very much. I enjoyed that because it tickled a bit. Tickled? Must have been that laughing gas. I'm very pleased with the way that the stitches have come together, and I think that in a, in a few weeks' time, you shouldn't really be able to see much of a scar. Well, it's good news, and I'm sure Charlie's learned his lesson. Do you need to wear a helmet yeah. while you're on grass? What do you think? Yes. Phew, oh. you had us worried there for a moment. So, Charlie heads off home with a nice new head. Bye, Charlie. Our next patient was expecting a normal day, but she's ended up in accident and emergency. Let's see her get fixed. In Sheffield Accident and Emergency, eight-year-old Evie has arrived with her mum and a rather nasty-looking cut to her chin. Ooh, catch that drip. It stings a lot. <laughs> I bet it does. What on earth happened? She's in her wellies. Is that a clue? Let's find out. Evie lives on a farm. On a farm? What animals does she have? She's got a pet donkey, two sheep, five horses, three cats and two dogs. Awesome! So what happened to her chin? Keep quiet and I'll tell you. It was snowing. Whoa, indeed it was. Evie decided to go sledging. She was bombing down a hill. She's going very fast. Yes, and then a huge gust of wind blew her sledge away. Oh, no! She landed face first, and her chin scraped along the snow and gravel beneath until she stopped. Ouch! The snow wasn't as thick as I thought it was. Never mind. Here's Dr Suzanne Barron to take a look at that chin. Quite a gash, this, actually. I'll say. Say what? That it's quite a gash. Duh. She's got a medium-sized cut under her chin, which will definitely need some cleaning and uh, bringing the edges back together again. So, first the mission is to give Evie's wound a good clean and get all the gravel out that they can see. The skin on our chin has five layers for a piece of grit to get lost in. A combination of skin, fat, fibrous tissue and blood cells surrounds our skull. When these layers are broken, dangerous infection can occur. So it's important that we get that bit of grit out of Evie's chin and close up the hole. There's one stubborn bit of grit that just won't budge. Step up Nurse Susan Moosen, grit extractor extraordinaire. If you're squeamish, look away now, because to get a grip on that gravel, she's using a needle. I used just the very end of the needle just to keep flicking it out. Eventually, I got to the, the end of it and got it all out. Yeah. Well done, Susan. With the grit gone, steri strips and glue hold the cut together until it heals. That's all done. Does that feel all right? Well done. That was very brave. And will brave Evie keep on sledging? I'll probably go on the deeper snow and the deeper field <laughs> now. <laughs> Good plan, Evie. You've got true grit. Very funny, Chris. Bye. Bye. Now we're heading back to accident and emergency, but this time we're on duty. So far on Operation Ouch, we've seen three hand injuries, Ow! two head casualties, Fell over in the school. A locked jaw, a stone in an ear, lots of broken bones, and a possible toenail up the nose. I sniffed it off. <laughs> OK. <laughs> it's all in a day's work for the staff in an accident and emergency department, and Chris and I are going to help the teams that deal with over a 1,000 patients a week. We're starting with Zan, who's on duty with nurse Nicola Evans at Alderhey Hospital in Liverpool. First in through the doors is Lexi, who's taken a tumble off her scooter. I'm going to shine my light in your eye. You keep looking at my nose. What Nikki's doing is looking at the functions of all the nerves coming out of Lexi's brain and making sure they all still work. She had a knock on the head. Can you follow my light with your eyes? They're all working fine. Brilliant. Well, that's good news. But before Lexi can go home, we have to look after the cuts on her face. And the best way to get Lexi out of one sticky situation is to get her into another one. So we're just gluing Lexi's nose closed. It's really quick to do. It keeps the cut clean, allows it to heal really nicely. So Lexi's going to have exactly the same scar as me. It's right there. Only you got yours from walking into a tea tray. 
Over in Manchester, I'm on duty with Professor Simon Carley, where a football injury brings James in with a hurt wrist. So you're not completely straight with that arm, are you? I think we're going to take a picture of your wrist, because that's where the pain was, but also a picture of your elbow, because mm. I think actually the problem is here. Did you think when you came in you might have broken something down here? Yeah. Yeah, but actually he may have transmitted the force up his arm and broken a bone in the elbow. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's an X-ray for James. Your elbow doesn't just bend there. There's another joint there that lets you turn your wrist like that. And that's what we think James is injured. And there's a nerve that goes around a bit of that joint and then ends up in your hand. And if you hurt the nerve there, you can get pain in your hand. Now it's back to Professor Simon for the verdict. There's lots of swelling within the joint. And that pretty much always means that there's a fracture in there. So this is a broken elbow. And those two bits of bone will just heal back together, won't they? They grow back together. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Particularly at your age. So it's a sling for James. And now over to Liverpool to see how Zahn's getting on. There have been lots of cases through the doors here. We've treated two sprained ankles and a broken collarbone. <laughs> Next up, Lily May comes in with an infected ear piercing. Pus has gathered behind her ear. I think, I think we need to get it out, really. Now, Lily, it's going to feel very, very cold. Lily's having gas and air and a cold spray to numb her ear. Then it's pus time. Fantastic. Oh, you're doing a really good job, Lily. That's great. She's good, isn't she? So this is really satisfying because we're getting all the pus, which is dead bacteria, out of Lily's ear. And that means it can all heal. Tell you what, on, on this side, Lily, it's, it's quite exciting. You're very brave. Can you give me a high five? Yay! <laughs> so Lexi, James and Lily have been patched up and sent home, all in a day's work for a busy accident and emergency department. In accident and emergency, the team are ready to fix our next patient. Let's meet him. In Manchester, seven-year-old Ryan is in hospital with a hole in his head. I was spinning around on my bike and I fell off it and whopped my head. Holy moly, you did! So how on earth did this happen? Ryan was on his bike, riding along. Oh dear, no helmet. But his brother fancied a ride on it. Can I have a go? OK. So Ryan span his bike around with a nifty 360-degree turn. Only as he was spinning, he fell off. He went flying through the air and landed with the handlebar smacking him square between the eyes. Ouch! It kind of hurts a bit. Just a bit? Crikey, you're brave. Anyway, let's get that gaping gash seen to. Enter Dr Jonathan Taylor. How did you fall? Do you remember? A handlebar. It didn't have no rubber on it and I want a head. So has the, the end of the handlebar gone into your head? Ouch. That's what I said. Must have hurt a lot. It did. Oh, can you tell me if it's too sore? Of course not. This is one tough guy we've got here. But because he wasn't wearing a helmet, he's had a blow to the head. Dr Jonathan needs to give Ryan a thorough checkover. Can I get you to do a few, few little things with your face? Pull some funny faces for me. Make sure you... <laughs> Very good. Hang on, Ryan. The test hasn't started yet. I just want to make sure that all his, all his nerves in his face are, are working fine, that he's not got any injuries to them. Anything we're touching you there? Mm -hmm. Also just making sure that he's sort of obeying commands and stuff so he's not had a serious head injury. Can I get you to screw your eyes tightly shut? Very good. Unopen them very wide like that. Are you scared? Very good. Looks like he's had a lucky escape. He's very brave in these situations when I've got to take him to hospital. Always calm. Cool. He's been here before. He must be accident prone. Because this is quite near to your eyes, I think we might need to put a little stitch in there. To make sure Ryan doesn't feel any pain, Dr Nandini Sen arrives to give him some laughing gas. <laughs> <laughs> and just like Mason earlier, with Ryan giggling away, the doctors can get to work. First up, they give his wound a good clean. And then they inject an anaesthetic to numb the area. <laughs> you're laughing. You're not meant to laugh. <laughs> and now the stitching can begin. It only takes two stitches to close up Ryan's wound. Did that hurt? No? Even his cut's smiling. <laughs> and once he's checked out the doctor's handiwork, this action hero is ready to go home. 
Yeah, yeah. Never mind the muscles, Ryan. On your bike. Let's hope we don't see you back here soon. Bye! Bye. Our next patient's had a rather unusual accident. Luckily, she's come to the right place. For you! Accident and emergency. The place to come for treatment of serious injuries and terrible traumas and... Hang on, this one looks all right. Looks can be deceiving, Zand. This is 10-year-old Shannon, and she's, well, just listen. My friend is having a snowball fight. Right. So what I've done is I've backed away. OK. I've slipped on the ice. Well, ice is slippy. I've um, fell, fell onto a... Um, uh... on, onto a... Hold on, let's get this story straight. OK. So Shannon was playing in the snow with her friends. She was enjoying running about when the others started a snowball fight. Ooh, watch out. As the snowballs were flying, Shannon backed away, trying to avoid getting hit. Look out for the ice! Yeah, well, she didn't. And she went flying, whacking her head onto a big telegraph pole behind her. Oh, so that's what it was. Ouch. So let's see it then. Ooh, that's no joke. Here's Dr Shorav Munjal to sort you out. All right, Shannon, so what time did this happen? Hmm, Mum, any ideas? It happened about an hour ago. I'm just going to have a look in your eyes. Dr Shorav needs to give Shannon a thorough examination, but if you're wondering why he's not looking at her cut, that's because the biggest worry after a blow to the head is concussion. Inside your skull, your brain is made up of soft tissue cushioned by blood and spinal fluid. If your head hits something very hard, your brain suddenly shifts inside your skull and can knock against the skull's bony surface. When the brain moves about like this, it can cause temporary brain injury called concussion. To find out if Shannon has got concussion, the doctor tests how her brain is working by checking her eyes respond properly to light, her muscles work normally, and he checks her nerves, and finally, her balance. Luckily, it looks like Shannon doesn't have concussion, which means now the doctor can check out that cut. Quite superficial, which needs a bit of super glue to close it up. Now, I'd just like to add, this isn't the kind of glue you get at the local shop. It's not super glue, this is special skin glue. But Shannon's not done yet. Wait till you see what the nurse does to fix that hole in her head. Shannon's own hair is being used to stitching thread. Tying it into knots brings the two sides together. Now that's what I call using your head. And once the knots are in place, there's a dab of skin glue and it's all over. And someone's relieved. Are you feeling okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Time to hit the road and head home. But maybe walking backwards is an idea you'll knock on the head in future, Shannon. I would never ever walk backwards ever again. Best foot forward then, eh? Bye. <laughs> Did you know the average person's skin, when stretched out, can cover two square meters? So you'd better look after that skin of yours. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love making things. But even in the safety of the classroom, there's still a lot of potential danger. <laughs> For example, you could cut yourself on a piece of paper. I don't think so, Chris. Or you could end up covering yourself in glue. Doesn't seem very likely. Anyway, I'm finished. So am I. Meow. Or... Finally, I guess you could make something so bad that your twin brother ends up laughing at you. Ah! I'm going to tell the teacher. Ah! Oh, my head. Uh-oh. Looks like an injury alert. So, what should you do if you have a bleeding gash on your head? A. Wrap 100 metres of toilet roll around your head. B. Immediately do a zombie impression. Or C. Apply pressure to stop the bleeding and then fetch an adult. Ethan, what's the answer? C. Why? Because you need to put pressure so it stops bleeding. Yes, Issa is absolutely right. 
Now, check this out. So, I'm just gonna... What is going on up on top of that building? That's really weird. Oh, son! You've cut your head! Ah! So, you know what we're gonna do now? We're gonna get a cloth. Now, if you don't have a tea towel, get one of your shirts, you can tear off a bit of shirt, and press hard on the area that's bleeding. And then it stops bleeding, and you get an adult. Ah! I'm trying to press hard with just my thumb on the one spot where he's bleeding. OK, so, do you guys want to have a go? Yes! yes. Ah, Remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to find an adult. Quick, quick, quick! <laughs> pressure! That was very quick acting, Ragda. That was great. I'd get my thumb in the tea towel and I'd press quite hard, like, like that. Do you think it's likely she might be feeling a bit faint? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. what should we do if she's feeling a bit faint? Sit her down. Do you want to sit down? Yeah. Ow, ow, it hurts, ow. What are we going to do now? <laughs> Call an ambulance. No, no ask for help. Yeah, I think ask for help, ask for an adult. So that's it. If you have a bleeding gash on your head, use a piece of cloth or your shirt to apply pressure to stop the bleeding. Sit the patient down if they're feeling faint and tell an adult. I'm sorry I laughed at your spaceship, Tom. That's OK. You're forgiven. Good. Well, in that case, I'll tidy up. Are you sure I'm forgiven? Yes, totally. <laughs> We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. This is a rapid response vehicle. It's on standby 24-7 to respond to whatever emergency calls come in. Today, I'm going along for the ride and you're coming with me. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. She can do 20 emergency call-outs in a day. And a new case is just in. We're going to see someone who's got a very severe cut on the head and they're refusing to go to hospital. Now, the reason we don't have the sirens on or the blue lights on is because they're with an ambulance crew at the moment. But Jan is the only person on call at the moment who can glue his head together, which is what we're going to try and do. At the house, the man, Paul, is in good spirits despite the nasty gash to his head. Thanks for coming out. It's short sure nice. It's all right. As a paramedic with 10 years' experience, Jan has the expert training needed to use special glue to join Paul's wound together. Right, this glue might sting a little bit, OK? How's that feel, Paul? Can't feel anything. Not stinging. Good. The super glue that Jan's using now will hold that wound closed. It doesn't need stitches and it stops the bleeding. It'll stop infection getting in and it gives a, it gives a nice result. It gives a tidy yeah. scar. All large head wounds should be seen at a hospital, but Paul has refused to go, so Jan gives him some advice. Any headaches that aren't controlled with painkillers will need to be assessed at the hospital. Okay. Vomiting more than twice will need to be assessed at the hospital. Good. We have got a slight issue. What? My fingers are stuck to your head. <laughs> uh, not really. <laughs> Jan has done all she can for Paul, and it's up to him now to be vigilant and spot any side effects. See you then. Take care, see you later. Bye. Bye. See ya. So even though Paul didn't want to go to hospital, we were still able to glue his head together. That stopped the bleeding, it reduces pain, it reduces the chances of infection, and we've given him some really clear advice about what to do if he gets worse and he does need to go to hospital. And that's all thanks to Jan. With hundreds of rapid response crews in the UK, if you have an accident, an emergency service like this won't be far away. Back in accident and emergency, Cardesia is waiting for surgery on her cut hand. Let's see her get fixed. In the waiting room in Liverpool, Cardesia's in with a cut hand. Cardesia was racing for her bus to school. They were neck and neck, but then the bus went faster. As she chased it, she tripped and cut her hand. Ouch! After being patched up, She's now back to see hand specialist, Mr. Partha Vayud. He's concerned she may have damaged her tendons or nerves. Is that OK or not too bad? Um, that, my finger's OK, but I just feel like this little effect is coming down here. So what's the verdict, Doc? I think this is going to need for us to do a, a small operation, OK? But if we find there are some injuries to your tendons or nerves, then we may need to try to repair these 
So it's off to the operating theatre to get this sorted. So we're going to have a look at your right hand today, aren't we? Khadija's given an anaesthetic, so she sleeps through the operation. But once they start, they get a surprise. The wound is very, very superficial. So based on that, it's less likely we're going to need to do anything more than give it a clean, dress it. Well, that's brilliant news for Khadija. Her hand is fine after all. So, what have you learned, Khadija? I've learned to never rush for a bus or take shortcuts in places that aren't really safe. Wise words. Bye. Give us a wave. <laughs> Our next patient's date was turned upside down when a bizarre accident occurred. <laughs> Let's meet them. In Manchester, accident and emergency, seven-year-old Yinka's in with her dad and little brother. Nice boots, little bro. So, what's the problem? I fell back and I rubbed my forehead. How do you do that, Yinka? Let's find out. Yinka's dad fancies himself as a bit of a chef. Is he a celebrity chef, Chris? In his dreams. Today, Yinka, her dad and little brother went to the shop to buy some tasty ingredients. Oh, I love food shopping. Oh, little bro's keen. But not as keen as those eggs. Excellent. Next, some sausages. Succulent. Yum. And some... Hey, what's that rumbling? Is it an earthquake? No, I think that's Super Bro's tummy. All this food is making him hungry. I know how he feels. Anyway, Dad, Yinka and Super Bro were on their way out of the shop when all of a sudden Yinka tripped and bumped her bonce on the step. Ouch. Hopefully, when the doctor finishes with us, we'll go back home and finish up with our special breakfast. And Dad still wants to make brekkie. I like it. Here to help with that is Dr Adam Whitehead. So, how did you fall over? I missed my foot. You miss your foot? Right, OK, then. First, the doctor has to make sure Yinka hasn't suffered any serious damage to her head in the fall. Did she lose consciousness at all, Dad? Was she knocked out? No, OK. No bleeding from the nose, no bleeding from the ears, nothing like that. No funny clear fluid from the nose or anything. OK. Now the dog has a look at her bump. It's not too deep, so it doesn't look like it's going to need to be pulled together by any stitches or anything like that. That's good news. Now the dog needs to check for concussion. Inside your skull, your brain is made up of soft tissue cushioned by blood and spinal fluid. If your head hits something very hard, your brain suddenly shifts inside your skull and can knock against the skull's bony surface. When the brain moves about like this, it can cause temporary brain injury called concussion. So the dog does some quick tests. Just follow my finger with your eyes. Can you just have a look over there? And Yinka has no signs of any problems. So, what's the verdict, dog? If she's well now, and this is just going to heal up by itself. OK? Result. She was super brave. Hopefully she gets home to have a special breakfast that Dad's going to cook for her. Now you're talking. Can I come? Bye! Bye. <laughs> Let's go back to accident and emergency to meet our next patient. And you're not going to believe this one. In Liverpool Accident and Emergency, six-year-old Gracie has arrived with her mum and a big bandage on her finger. I've got a slipped finger. A slipped finger? It was bleeding a lot. Ah, a slit finger. Sounds like a nasty cut. I think the doctor's going to make it all better. That's right. But how did the ghastly gash happen? Well, Chris, once upon a time, in a faraway land... Uh, Liverpool, Zand. Gracie's from Liverpool. Go with it, Chris. We're in the fairy tale land of Liverpool. Um, righto. Princess Gracie was in her castle admiring her mother's jewels. Hang on, who's that? A fairy, obviously, and she's flown off with the diamond earring. Uh, OK. And Gracie was trying to get it back when all of a sudden the earring flew under the roaring... Zand, that's an electric fire. Oh, all right, fine. But as she tried to retrieve the earring, her hand got stuck. Uh-oh. And when she pulled it out, her finger sliced open. Ouch. There's a bit of a cue in accident and emergency. So, while we're waiting, why don't you tell us something about yourself, Gracie? I've never been to A&E before. Never been to A&E before? Well done. I've got pierced ears. <laughs> she likes her bling. These are my plaques. They'd suit you, Zand. 
Oh, thank you. That's enough about you, Gracie. Time for nurse practitioner Julia Maxted to sort that cut out. Can you just bend your finger the end, little end bit? Lovely, and straighten it again. First things first, Nurse Julia needs to figure out if Gracie's cut is so deep it's damaged the insides. Oh, you're very brave. We do that to just check that the ligaments are all working. A ligament is the tissue that joins a bone to a bone. Can you feel me touching there and there? Good girl. That's quite a cut you've got there, Gracie. Yes. But the nurse is happy there's no internal damage done, so she can clean that cut and make sure there's no dirt lurking deep inside. Excuse my hand as hard as she can. <gasps> Whoa, she's strong. <laughs> to help the cut heal and join Gracie's flesh back together, the nurse has some special paper stitches. And then we just pull the edges of your cut together. With her finger taped back together, Nurse Julia is using a high-tech bandage strap of device thingy. A what? It's just a bandage applicator, Zand. Yeah, well, it's pretty cool, though. It is. And the bandage will keep Gracie's damaged digit nice and clean. You won't be able to help with the washing up or anything like that. Oh, nice one. OK. How's that feel? Right. OK. Gracie will need to keep the tape and bandage on for three days. It feels better. Any advice for other budding princesses out there, Gracie? Be careful with your hands or this will happen. Wise words. So leave it to Mum to rescue that earring. Bye! <laughs> Our next patient thought they were going to have another normal day. Normal day? But they ended up in the accident in the emergency department. <laughs> let's go meet them. Just let's. In Sheffield Children's Hospital, 11-year-old Harvey is in with a bandage bonce. Uh, is he a half-dressed Egyptian mummy? No, Zand. I've got an open cut on my head. Ooh, nasty. By getting hit with a wooden cricket bat at school. Ooh, and how did that happen? I'm stumped. Hmm. It was a beautiful sunny day and Harvey was playing cricket. Oh, was he at Lord's playing in the ashes? Unfortunately not. Was he in Barbados, on the beach, with the waves lapping at his feet? Uh, no, he was in a concrete yard. Oh. Harvey was playing cricket with his class in PE. There he is. He was waiting in line for his turn to bat. He was up next. I hope he doesn't get a duck. Batter was at the crease. The ball was bowled. She swung hard, but missed, and hit Harvey's head. Ouch! I touched my eye where it hurt and I, I looked at my hand and there were blood, so I was quite surprised. I bet you were. Here's Dr Jen Worthy to check out Harvey's head. What's happened to you today? Uh, well, I've got hit in the side of the head with a cricket bat. The person who was batting missed the ball and followed through right into my oh. uh, eye. And they missed the ball and, and hit your face. What a rubbish shot. Yes, it was a rubbish shot. Dr. Jen does a series of checks for any broken bones. I'm just going to press down here. Is that just, right? just that left. And tests Harvey's brain is functioning as normal. Well, can you do this like a chicken? <laughs> I'm going to try and push your arms down. You've got to keep yeah. the chicken pose, OK? Do not stop being a chicken. Oh, that's good. And puff your cheeks out like a hamster. Chicken, hamster. This is turning into a zoo. And then can you frown for me? I look very angry, like someone hit you in the head with a cricket bat. That's good. Good angry face, Harvey. I would like just to do an X-ray of the bones in his face, just because he's tender. So when I was pressing just down there, yeah. could be a little fracture there. Then it'll be a case of sticking you back together. Harvey's had his head X-rayed. Really still there, please. And then Dr. Jen assesses the results. So this is your face. So this is where your eyes are. This bit that was sore is round here. Yep. And I can't see any fractures there. There's like a nice smooth line. We're looking right up Harvey's hooter. But it's worth checking because sometimes it can cause problems with your eyes. With no bones broken, Nurse Gina cleans Harvey's cut and steri strips his battered head. Not too frustrating with all that round your eye. Good. All patched up, it's time to go home. So, what have you learnt, fella? Make sure you know when to run or not, because you might get him in the face of the cricket bat. And we wouldn't want that, would we?
Bye. Bye.